Hi, this is Mike from BandLab, and in this video, we're going to make a breaks beat in BandLab's free online DAW. You can open this project yourself with the link in the video description. And if you find this guide useful, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be the first to know when new videos drop. I begin by setting the project tempo to 136 beats per minute and the project key to F minor. I'd like to have a break beat in this track, but I'm going to start off with some kick and snare one shots first to make sure the drum part has enough weight. I create a sampler track and open BandLab Sounds. I select the One Shots tab and enter Kick into the text search field. Kick 10 One Shot WC Hip Hop is the sort of kick I'd like to use, so I drag it onto the first sampler pad. I then enter Snare into the text search field and drag Snare OG onto the second sample pad. The snare is louder than the kick, so I turn its volume level down to around minus 11 dB. I program in a two-step beat, which has snares on the 2 and the 4, and a kick on the 1 and between the 3 and the 4. I duplicate this out for another bar. To duplicate notes or clips in BandLab, hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows, and then drag them into position. The second time around, I add an extra kick on the last eighth note. I then duplicate these two bars to fill the 4 bar clip. I turn this track down to minus 4.8 dB to give us more headroom to add other elements. Now I'd like a breakbeat to layer over the kick and snare. In BandLab Sounds, I click the Packs tab and enter Rave into the text search field. I open the Rave 2020 pack and set the instrument filter to Beats. Rave 2020 Beat 07 is the kind of beat I'm after, so I drag it into the project. I set its volume to minus 5.1 dB to balance it with the existing drum sounds. I'd also like a shaker to add more energy. In BandLab Sound's Loops tab, I search for Shaker and drag Hyperdrive Shaker into the project. I use the loop handle at the top right hand corner of the audio clip to loop it out for four bars. The shaker is quite quiet, so I open up the effects page and add a Dynamics BL1176 compressor to boost its level. I'd also like a housey, offbeat, open hat to keep things rolling. So I add a new virtual instrument track, setting it to drums, drum pads, new house kit. I turn this track down to minus 8.4 dB. I sequence the open hat between beats. Now I'd like a musical loop to base the track's music on. I think an arpeggiated synth sound would work well, so in the BandLab Sounds Loops tab, I search for ARP. I drag Hyperdrive ARP into the project. I turn it down to minus 1.5 dB. I'd like this sound to be a little more epic, so in the effects panel I add a delay filter echo effect. I set the mix to 23% and the delay to 220 milliseconds. Now it's time to add a bass line. I'm going to create this bass line out of two elements, a mid-range Reese and a low-end sub bass. I'm going to start with the Reese because this is the more complex of the elements and I want to make sure I get this right first. I add a new instrument track and set it to Keyboards, Synth Leads, Two Saw Detune. I turn this track down to minus 17.5 dB. I program in a bass line that plays F, D sharp, D sharp, G sharp, A sharp. Good. 
Currently this sound is a simple detuned sawtooth. I'm going to use a chain of effects to bring it to life. I know I'd like to distort the sound a touch, so I start by adding a distortion, BL driver. I set its drive to 1.7 and turn the tone all the way up. This makes the signal louder and introduces some harmonics, but it's not going to do anything too intense yet. Now I add a tone multi-filter effect and move it to before the distortion effect. I set the filters mode to high pass and turn the Q or resonance value all the way up. This will heavily emphasize the filter's cutoff frequency. Next, I automate the filter's cutoff frequency parameter. Let's hear how this sounds without the distortion. Now with the distortion. I find that to be more texturally interesting, and I'd like to make more of it. I add a modulation stereo chorus. Here's how it all sounds together. Now we need to add the low end sub bass to fill out the sound. I add an instrument track and set it to basses, synth basses, sine bass. I turn it down to minus 11.5 dB. I duplicate the MIDI from the Reese track so that the sine bass plays the same notes. I want to find a sound I can layer over these existing elements to hype things up as the arrangement progresses. In BandLab Sounds, I search for Scratch and drag O Scratch 5 into the project. I loop it out for the four bars and turn it down to minus 4.8 dB. I don't want to repeat the arpeggiator loop for the whole track, so I search for something to create a B section out of. I return to the Rave 2020 pack and set the instrument filter to synth. Rave 2020 Synth 11 is the one for this track, so I turn its volume level down to minus 5.3 dB. BandLab automatically adjusts the loop's pitch for the project key, but I prefer it at the original pitch, so I take its pitch shift down to zero in the editor panel. I'd like these synth horns to sound dubbier, so in the effects panel I add a filter echo, setting the mix to 31% and the delay to 260 milliseconds. I also add a reverb, studio reverb, setting the mix to 3.7 and the size to 7.4. Now I'm going to add some elements that will help the arrangement flow smoothly. I add an instrument track, sending it to drums, drum pads, 909 kit. I program the snare to play on 8th, 16th, and 32nd notes. To add 32nd notes, set view grid size to 1 32nd. Remember to set it back to smart when you're done. To give this sound an extra dimension of movement, I add a modulation phase 45 effect. In BandLab Sounds, I select the One Shots tab, search for Impact, and drag IGH Kit 02 Shots FX Deep Impact into the project. I turn this track down to minus 6 dB. Next, I search for Riser. 
Noise riser is the one, and I drag it into the project. I turn it down to minus 13.3 dB. Now I select the Loops tab and search for Crash. Tomahawk Crash is the one for me. And I set it to minus 9 dB. I use the handle at the bottom right hand corner of the clip to truncate the second crash. The arrangement starts with just the breakbeat, with the kick, snare, and the one shots kicking in after 8 bars. We then break down to the ARP synth. The breakbeat and Reese are added next. I've automated the Reese to filter in and out throughout the track. The noise effects builds up to the drop, where the beats and the sub bass kick in. After 8 bars, the shakers are added. Then the scratching comes in. At bar 57, we switch up to the synth brass B section. The scratching hypes things up after 8 bars, as the Reese filters back in. Now we have a second breakdown with the Reese filtering out. Again, the breakbeat comes back in as we build to a second drop. The scratches hype things up again one last time before the end of the track. You can fork this project to make your own version of it using the link in the video description. Have fun!